Off meta. What is off meta? Why is off meta? Is is this off meta? What about you, good sir? Are you, are you off meta? Leave me alone. I swear I will phone the cops. Please leave me and my children alone. Oh God, please. Wait a second. Under uh, under that rock over there is. Have I finally found it? Ah, there you are, off meta. You were at my side all along. But wait, now that I've actually found off meta, I need to learn how to use it. Ugh, why did nobody tell me that I needed to learn how to be good at this game? I always thought that GTA Online doesn't take any skill to be good. Now in GTA Online, there are certain vehicles and strats that are, eh, uh, well, let's just say they can sort of be considered as overpowered. <laughs> But, what if I told you that despite these incredibly easy, skillless and obvious options to get that epic 1-0 on other GTA Online players, there are a subset of people that decided, ahem, no thanks Janine, and opted instead to use some of the worst, some of the most random, and some of the most obscure vehicles and strats in the entire game to fight other players. You'd, you'd, you'd probably call them a uh, stupid. But alas, they're actually not, since all these vehicles and all these options can actually work in the hands of the right people. And not only that, they actually work really, really, really well. So, without further ado, let's get into the off-meta strats players use in car shooting game, or, of course, otherwise known by most, as literal hell on earth. Um... Now let's just lay a formal definition of what off-meta strats are in games. A game's meta is simply the approach in a game that is the most mainstream and most widely adopted. For example, the meta strat in GTA Online is to be the biggest degenerate possible by using an incredible and vast array of skills and talent to overcome opponents in the game. For example, one such skill a meta player may adopt is this here flying bike, which can be bought from Warstock Cash and Carry for just under $4 million. However, a off meta player says, um, I don't think so, to all these options and strays away from the mindless toxic horde with vehicles that one wouldn't first think to use especially when put into comparison with all these overpowered options. The off-meta player doesn't use what's popular. They don't use what everyone else uses. They use... Uh, they use a... a, a scooter and, 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 a, and a flare gun and their friend. Now, I mean, who in their right mind would willingly subject themselves to any of these things listed above? We all know how bad the Oppressor Mark II can be in the hands of the wrong people. However, one thing you may not be aware of is how good off-meta vehicles can be in the hands of the right people. And today, we're going to be exploring some of these vehicles and the people that can make the most out of them. And with all this being said, first off-meta vehicle we're going to be taking a look at is the Oppressor Mark II. Wait, 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 hang on a second here. The Oppressor Mark II is a part of the meta. I mean, griefers and, and tryhards and, and noobs and, and X underscore Florgus made you cry underscore X use it all the time. There is no way the Mark II is off meta. Well there, my little Istrorat. What if I told you that sometimes, to be considered off meta, it isn't always about the vehicle itself. It's actually about how you use it. Now, we all know how overpowered and uh, easy it is to use in comparison to the destruction you can bring to a friendly grinder's lobby. But there is in fact a way to use it that makes the Oppressor Mark II one of the hardest, one of the most challenging vehicles to use, and one that requires the most skill out of any other vehicle in the entire game. What if we took the Oppressor Mark II and turned it upside down? Yes, exactly. With this simple tweak, you can actually make the Mark II the most skillful vehicle to use. Now, if you don't believe me, it's actually really easy to try for yourself. However, it's difficult to master. You see, when your Mark II is upside down, all your controls are entirely inverted. If you want to go up, you start going down. Want to go left, you go right. Now this may seem easy at first, but there is one other issue. When you're upside down, the bike tries its best to auto-correct itself and put you upright. What this means is that when you're upside down, if you don't manually correct the bike trying to put itself upright, you won't be able to stay upside down. Now this is kind of hard to explain, so hopefully the footage on screen will help you out to showcase just exactly what I'm talking about. But now you may be asking, why would anyone even want to use the Mark II upside down? And 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 that's an and that's an excellent question. A, a gold star for you at the back of the class. Well done. You see, when the Mark II is upside down and you have fully mastered the controls, it's much, much faster, more agile. And best of all, you can dodge any missile in the game with some skillful manoeuvring. The biggest weakness for the Mark II when you're using it properly is that it takes forever to go up and down. However, when you're piloting it upside down, well, that's no longer an issue. You can fly straight up or straight down whenever you want. But of course, all these amazing plus sides comes at a huge disadvantage. You can easily be knocked off the bike. 
If you just slightly tap a wall or a tree or anything for that matter, it literally, if you touch anything, you'll come flying off the bike straight into the loving arms of the cold hard pavement, where that pesky tryhard on the ground you are fighting will proceed to give you his L. This is so sad. If you're looking for an in-depth tutorial on how to fly the Mark II upside down properly, you can find one created by the Met from MetPro. He is probably the best at flying the Mark II upside down, and his tutorial is the most in-depth. But from the Mark II, we can move on to the Mark I. There was actually a time where people thought the Mark I was an incredibly overpowered vehicle, and was considered in the same vein as the Mark II. However, time has been kind to the Mark I as its younger brother has taken the spotlight and backlash away from the vehicle, and now the Mark I is looked upon more favourably, and is seen as a vehicle that does in fact take skill to use. Where the Mark I and Mark II differs is where the Mark II can float in mid-air, the Mark I cannot and instead relies upon a boosted glide to get around. Now for you fellow zoomers out there, to describe it in a way we can understand, the difference between these two vehicles is like when in Minecraft, the Mark II is like when someone is flying in creative, and the Mark I is like when you're using Elytra and rockets. This is so epic. But of course, let's take a proper look at the Mark I. The Mark I has insanely accurate missiles, like the Mark II, although the Mark I's are just slightly less accurate. This makes it great against vehicles, just as the Mark II is. However, where the Mark I shines more is in its ability to hit ground targets. Because of how the Mark I can glide, you can fire your missiles at the ground at a much steeper angle than the Mark II can, as shown on screen here. Because of this, you can fly up and then point the Mark I down towards a target on the ground and then dive bomb them while shooting your missiles, which makes you an incredibly hard target to hit given the angle at which your target can aim is too low to hit you whilst you're dive bombing. Now, because I am uh, absolutely useless on the Mark 1, I have been using Joker for Life's footage of him absolutely wrecking people on his Mark 1. He is, quite honestly, easily the best Mark 1 user, and his videos are great to watch if you want to see how using the Mark 1 can be used to its full potential. And you can quite honestly learn far more about the Mark 1 than anything I could provide. So, go over to his channel and watch all of his videos, like, like, like every single one. They are very, very good. But now, let's take a look at some of the vehicles that are, for the average person, quite honestly, an absolute handicap. And if you use them, you're sort of putting yourself at a disadvantage. But, with a bit of skill and, ahem, <clears throat> intelligence, which you clearly don't have if you're playing this cursed car shooty game, you can perform just as well, or sometimes even better, than the common lowly 1-0 epic oppressor Mark II tryhard griefer in GTA Online 3 mode war. This, this is, this is my, this is my YouTube title. Please click on the video. Please, just God, please click on the video. This is my, let's take a look at the scramjet and the, um. Terreador. Now, these are epic vehicles. The Scramjet and Terreador, however, both serve entirely opposite purposes. The Terreador is simply a combination of taking the jumping and rocket boost capabilities of the Scramjet and uh, everything else from the Stromberg, such as the incredibly accurate missiles, the armor, and the, uh, if you want to, I don't know, look at all the low res fish in the oceans, you can, you can use the Terreador as a submarine too. Very nice. The Scramjet is great against ground targets if you, the driver, has a bit of skill. If you jump over someone on the ground with the Scramjet, it is in fact too high to aim at. The ground target cannot aim high enough to hit your car, so if you have the skill to pull it off, you can consistently hit the person you're aiming at with minimal risk of dying. A great person to watch and learn how to use the Scramjet is the GTA Online instrument, Mayonnaise. Arguably, he's the best Scramjet user in the game, and he's created a great guide on how to use the Scramjet properly and get the most out of it. Go watch it if you want to get good with the Scramjet. It is very epic. However, if we move on to the Triador, where this vehicle absolutely shines is in swatting mosquitoes. The Triador, against the average Mark II user, is incredibly useful. Not only can you tank six of the Mark II rockets, whereas the Mark II can only take one of yours, the rockets on the Triador are actually as accurate as the Mark II's. So, if you do the math, armor plus accurate rockets equals an epic 1-0 against any average Mark II griefer. Now this, this is epic. To my knowledge, there isn't a true expert with the Triador like with the Mark II, Mark I or Scramjet, given it's a relatively new vehicle and there hasn't, in my opinion, been enough time for anyone to truly master it. However, my favourite creator that uses the Triador often is Project Helisexuality. His heroic Triador makes Mark II Broomstick Boy Rage, a uh, uh, letter emoji, fire emoji, is a great entertaining video to watch to see how exactly the Triador can be used against the Mark II and, as the title would suggest, learn how to make broomstick boys rage. However, as a small caveat, if you use the Triador against a person flying the Mark II upside down, you uh, you, you, you will die, you will die, it, it, it don't even bother trying. But, of course, most people won't be using the Mark II that way anyway. And beyond that, most people that actually do use the Mark II are incredibly stupid, and they've all been diagnosed with baby brain. So, it's still incredibly useful regardless.
Now, finally, to talk about one of the best, most epic, most useful off-meta vehicle, one that absolutely can and will destroy anything it comes across. The one that, quite honestly, makes every tryhard and every griefer quake in their bulletproof helmets and god mode vans. The one, the only, Fagio. Yes, the Fagio is in fact the best off-meta vehicle in the entire game. No, 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 stop laughing, I'm, be I'm being serious, come on, please. The Fagio has one key advantage that other vehicles simply do not. I mean, I mean, just, just, just look at it. It's a scooter that drives just as fast as a one-legged fat man with crippling constipation. It's absolutely useless. It's exactly what you want people to think. The people you'll be fighting will be too preoccupied with wondering why the hell you're using the Fagio in the first place, to wonder what you're going to do with it. And this is when you strike. Whilst they're distracted, you hit them with a sticky, and they're left with a fat 1-0 wondering what the hell just happened to them. As Sun Tzu said in his famous Art of War, and I quote, Use a Fagio in GT Online, and you're a Giga Chad. Man, was he, was he so wise and ahead of his time. But with all this being said, I hope you learned a little bit more about the off-meta section of our lovely little community on Car Shooter Game. Sometimes in GT Online, the best option isn't always the most fun. Yes, you may get an epic 1-0 with your Mark II oppressor, of course. But maybe, just maybe, the best option is actually to have a bit of fun. Perhaps the GTA Online all along was the friends we made along the way. Only joking, why would you ever have friends on Car Shooter Game where you can just get an epic 1-0? I mean, that, that, that's just so much better, isn't it? I mean, come on.